I can't get used to. Turtle eggs, chicken eggs. Oh, yeah, but... Gilligan, an egg is an egg. I know, Skipper, but every time I look down at the plate, all I can see is sunny side turtles. <laughs> Gilligan? Yes, sir. Turtle eggs. That's right, and I will make some coffee. <laughs> Put things away. You can't find them when all her finery. <laughs> Boomerang, you can't throw them away. <laughs> Lovey oh, bird. Mr. Howell, where are you, Mr. Howell? Oh, I'm at Pebble Beach playing golf, you dunderhead. Where do you think I am? <laughs> can't find you, Mr. Howell. I'm down here looking for something, Gilligan. Oh, there you are, Mr. Howell. Say, listen, Mr. Howell. That's how you know where I am. What do you think? I'm bending the elbow with the Maharana of Sarawana? <laughs> what a Sarawana. Well, never mind that. I can't find my silver lame polo shirt. That's what. Oh, Mr. Howe, I have some real important news. Important? It's catastrophic. It's the only one of its kind with the crest. You understand? Yeah, but not that important, Mr. If Howe. If I don't find it, I'm going to notify the FBI, Scotland Yard, the New York Stock Exchange. New York Stock Exchange? Yes, I notify them about everything. <laughs> well, Mr. Howe. Marianne, that's it. Marianne. Marianne does the laundry. Maybe she knows where it is. Hope she isn't using a harsh detergent. Oh, well, Mr. Howe. Don't stand point. there, boy. I don't care. Until I find my treasure possession. Speed! Speed, son! And now, once again, it's time for radio's most popular dramatic series, Old Dr. Young. <laughs> when last we left County Hospital, Eileen Frobisher had been admitted for a checkup. Unbeknownst to her, her x-rays revealed something. Meanwhile, in another part of the hospital, old Dr. Young is talking to his son, young Dr. Young. Sean. Nose. <laughs> oh, get again. I'm sorry, Mrs. Howell, but I, I am improving. This time I got as far as the nose before I blew it. <laughs> You're supposed to charm Mary Ann, not take inventory. <laughs> now, can't you use a more romantic voice? More breathless. Mary Ann, you're peachy keen. Gilligan, <laughs> <laughs> you're supposed to sound romantic, not asthmatic. It's not so <laughs> types, to be honest. Well, exactly. I mean, they like men that talk about riding a range and, and bulldogging and shootouts and all that sort of thing. <laughs> okay, Bronco Billy, head her up at the pass. You're on, partner. They went that away. <laughs> Mary. 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 Young Dr. Young, on the advice of his father, the doctor, has told... Don't worry, fellas. I'm gonna build you a new house. <laughs> Oops. Better add another bedroom. <laughs> really read your mind, Professor? Well, it must be some sort of a trick. I mean, it's impossible to read minds. Well, let's try them again, Professor. Try them again. I will, I will. Yeah. The index of refraction is N equals sine 1 over sine R equals V1 over V2. Well, there's no doubt about it. Mines. Well, why don't we just walk up to him and ask him? Well, I did, I did. And he said that he didn't know. Oh, well, you can believe him. If there's one thing that boy can't do, it's tell an untruth. Yes, I know, I know, my dear. It's, it's so revolting. <laughs> Years ago. Well, whoever wrote that book is a blooming idiot. <laughs> well, I'll ignore that. But according to legend, which now appears to be fact, these seeds were used by the ancient mystics to induce telepathic communications, a form of mind reading. And it works, Professor. Well. Novel idea of giving the annual Howell Cotillion on a deserted island, don't you think, Lovey? Yes, it is, dear. Do you remember when we gave it in the Mahatma Gandhi room at the Taj Mahal? Oh, it's simple things like that that make life worth living, my dear. <laughs> you know, Thurston, though, I'm a little disappointed. There are some people on the mainland I wanted to invite this year. Well, you're disappointed. Think how they must feel. In the social set, this must be known as the year that time stood still. Oh, dear. Lovey, 
Yes, dear. Uh, do you think the guests will notice that my tails are last year's? Oh, look on the bright side, darling. It may start a whole new trend. Oh, yes, like the time I wear a carnation made of shredded $100 bills. Ah, <laughs> what daring I had in those days. There, that's it. Oh, my poor dear, you must be exhausted making out the invitations without a secretary. I wish there was something that I could do. Well, if it's not too tiring, you could deliver them. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Of course I could. I see you invited them all. Well, I thought it best under the circumstances. My, my, aren't we being democratic in a Republican sort of way? <laughs> Is everybody happy? One, two, one, two, one, two. Hope I'm not bothering my... Aha, fossil face. Just because you have Davy Davis tied to the buzzsaw and because you have his tried and true buddy, friendly and lovable Lester L. Lewis tied to the railroad tracks does not mean that... Oops. Guess it does. <laughs> Better. Now, you sweep like this. Back and forth. Back and forth. Sweep. Back and forth. Back and forth. Well, this is going to be fun. That's fine. That's fine. Well, now sweep the other way. We'll turn around. We'll sweep the other way. Are you going to take all day? Which one of these makes you go faster? That's a grenade, all right. World War II hand grenade. And they almost got me and Gilligan with it. The question is, who were they? And why did they throw the grenade? Maybe they're trying to attract our attention. <laughs> Gilligan, you don't throw grenades to attract attention? Unfortunately, Gilligan, people throw grenades in order to kill other people. Exactly. I mean, if you want to attract somebody's attention, you tap them on the shoulder and say, hi. Hi. You're right. It's a good way to attract attention. <laughs> Gilligan, will you be quiet? We're trying to think this thing out. Skipper. Could it have been lodged in a tree and accidentally fallen out? No, Professor, it came flying through the air. With the greatest of ease, the hand grenade knocked us down to our knees. <laughs> that is enough of that. I promise I'll be quiet. You be quiet right here. We're trying to figure out a plan of action. <sighs> the important thing is motive. Why did they throw the grenade? Well, I say the important thing is how many have they got? Psh, they're trying to figure out a plan of action. Precisely why I'm here. Hmm? So <laughs> Do this, Gilligan, do that. Gilligan, Gilligan, always Gilligan. Yeah, don't tell me he threw you out. Just let him try, boy, just let him try. Well, then what's that? Well, everybody's been using my side with their extra stuff. Let him try that again. Just let him try. Gilligan, there is no need to get angry. I'm not angry. I'm mad. <laughs> Listen to me for a minute. If you're going to try to tell me to make a big, fat, and bossy, forget it. You realize that we're sitting on a keg of dynamite? Where? Where? <laughs> not literally, but figuratively. Seven people cooped up on an island. It won't take much to light the fuse. That's okay with me. You know, there was a case some years ago. Seven civilized people shipwrecked near Melanesia. All friendly, all helping each other. Until... Until? Island madness set in. But we're not that kind of people. We're nice kind of people. So were they. Until they destroyed each other. Destroyed each other? D-E-D? -E Dead? <laughs> you tell me what this is all about? But, darling, I did. Well, all you do is keep mumbling ginger money, ginger money, ginger <laughs> money. <laughs> lovely little dozen. <laughs> Come in. Ginger, don't be afraid. But he's drooling. Oh, he's drooling. 